Hey guys, I'm Jen. Today, a simple experience in the hospital cafeteria really put this idea on my heart and made me want to share it with you guys here on YouTube. So let's talk about the broken food system and not just talk about it, but actually think of ways that we can change it. So I work at a hospital. I don't work in the hospital per se, but I work for the medical center. Just across the street is the hospital with the different hospital cafeteria and food options. So while I always love to prepare lunch ahead of time and have something to eat, Occasionally, there are days where I just run out of time and I don't have a second to prepare lunch. So today was one of those days and I go over to the hospital because I only had 30 minutes between being able to get lunch and go to a meeting, so I didn't have the option to go somewhere else to grab food. So I walk in the hospital and I head on over to the cafeteria. I've been here a number of times. I pretty much know what to expect and each time I have the same experience. So I walk in and I'm trying to decide what can I eat for lunch. Now, I have somewhat of a limited diet because we are primarily vegan. Um, the only time we're really not vegan is when we eat eggs here on our farm, but I try to avoid eggs when I'm out in public because I don't know where they're coming from and, and I also don't eat dairy or meat, so options are limited there as well. But you know, one would hope that there would be some plant-based options available in a hospital setting. Anyways, I go in and the first place I normally check is the soup section. I have not had a lot of luck here, but every now and then there will be like some sort of vegetable based soup and I can go ahead and check the ingredients on my phone and sometimes it will be safe. So I walk over there and the soup for the day was like a tomato vegetable soup. And I was like, yes, that sounds really nice. Um, I could go for a soup right now. It's kind of a wintry day out and that sounds really delicious. So I look it up on my phone and the second ingredient in the soup was high fructose corn syrup. I'm just thinking, how and why is there high fructose corn syrup in what is supposed to be a tomato vegetable soup? If you've ever had tomatoes from the garden, you know that they are plenty sweet, they do not need sugar added to them, and they make a perfect soup really just by themselves. They do not need high fructose corn syrup. So why is there high fructose corn syrup in the soup? With that option eliminated, the only other options was making a salad, um, which I don't like to do because guys, the salads at this cafeteria are really gross. They have absolutely no flavor to the lettuce. There's nothing, the lettuce has zero flavor. And so then there's another option where I could have french fries or chips or something that is vegan and dairy free and meat free and all of that, but obviously not good for me. I know fried foods are not good for me. And I really wanted something fresh on this day because it's been a long week, I've been pretty wiped and exhausted, and so I didn't want something like that in my body. So then I picked the last option, which was a naked juice smoothie. And I had that for lunch. And guys, it was not balanced, it was not enough calories, and I was hungry in the hour. But this situation really stuck with me in a new way because I was just thinking about how you go to a hospital to be healed. You go to a hospital to seek help with issues you're facing in your body. Yet the very place you're going to be healed is causing your sickness. If I ate french fries every day for lunch at the hospital cafeteria, I would need to go to the hospital a lot for some help because my body would not be feeling well. It may not be now, but it would definitely not be feeling well later. So I was disappointed. I was disappointed that the only options I could have were options that were not going to feed my body the medicine that it needs to be healthy. 
and it made me think about our food system and how broken it is. I was listening to the Goldshaw Farm podcast this week. It just released earlier this week. It's amazing. I definitely recommend it. And Jessica Sowers was talking about this broken food system and how really homesteading is an opportunity for people to address that system in their own families and in their own lives and find a healthier way to live. And not only did she talk about it, but also Jason from South Land talked about it in his podcast episode. And he mentioned that when he was getting treated for cancer, after he was officially cancer-free, and he asked the doctors, what kind of diet should I follow? Is there any certain recommendations you have for food that I should eat? They were like, nope, just go back to what you were eating before. And things like that really break my heart. Food is so important for our health. It's what we put in our bodies. It's like one of the few things we have control over. It's just so sad when the people that are supposed to be providing us with that information and that help aren't doing it. Not only that, but what is available and what's out there is so limited in so many areas. I mean, there are entire places called food deserts where you cannot find high nutrient food within like a 10 mile radius and the only things available are fast food and alcohol. That is heartbreaking. I think it's really easy to go into homesteading because we want to reconnect with our food. We want to help our families and ourselves be healthier because the world we live in is not doing that. The world we live in makes it really hard to live that way. So then we just disconnect. We find a little piece of property. We disconnect from the things that are negatively impacting our health. And we try to do those things that are positively going to impact our health. It's easy to let that be where it ends with our lives being better, with our family's lives being better, but to ignore what's going on in the rest of the world. And I think it's really important that we don't just stop there. The hardest part, the saddest part to me about this broken food system is it disproportionately affects those living in poverty. I can go to the store and I can see something that is organic, or inorganic, and I can see the price difference. It's very clear. And I know that while one might be cheaper, the more expensive option, the more natural option, is going to save us money in the long run because we're investing in our health by making those choices. And down the road, we're going to be healthier individuals, healthier as we age, and we're likely to have lower medical costs. It's also likely going to increase the moments that we have here on this planet by making our bodies healthier so that we can live longer. So I can make that choice. I can spend the extra dollar on the organic romaine lettuce. Not everybody has that option. Not everybody can spend extra money on the organic option. And so why do we even have, why isn't all of our food just organic to begin with? We use the term organic to indicate foods that are safe from chemicals and pesticides and things like that. How is it possible that we are feeding our bodies foods that have been sprayed with chemicals to intentionally kill other organisms? But then we're feeding those bodies those same foods with those same chemicals, expecting them not to kill things within us. And that's deemed acceptable. And we just assume, um, we just trust that if it's available, if it's on the shelves, that it's safe. <sighs> it is so disappointing. It's so disappointing that we have to have a term organic to begin with, that that's where we've come in our culture. And what's crazy about all of this is not only is the better option, the organic options, the natural options, better for our bodies and our health, it also tastes so much better. It tastes as it was intended to taste, as it was designed to taste. Anybody who grows food in their backyard knows the difference between tomatoes and peppers and potatoes and all of those things. The difference between those things grown in your own yard and those things that you buy from the store. It is shocking. It is very shocking how different a potato is from your yard than a potato from the store. So you take those foods in their pure context and they don't taste right and then you turn them into something like a potato chip or french fries or all of these other things and you have to add things like all these unnatural chemicals and seasonings and flavorings in order to make it taste good because at its core, it didn't taste good to begin with because 
The person who's growing it never intends to eat it themselves. And they're growing it with profit in mind to maximize their profit. And compromising your health, compromising the taste. <laughs> and so then we start to say, well, potatoes are the problem. Potatoes aren't good for you. Let's just not eat potatoes. Or we'll say, okay, well, salt's the problem. Let's stop putting salt on foods. Or we'll say sugars are the problem. Or maybe even chemicals are the problem. But the problem at its core is so much simpler. It's connection. We've lost connection with our food. And if you reconnect with the food that you eat, you reconnect with what is going in your body, those things all seem less of a problem. Because if you eat food fresh from the garden, it doesn't need added sugar. It doesn't need added salt. If you're eating things fresh from the garden, whole foods suddenly are enough and they're flavorful enough. They're enough in and of themselves where you don't need all these extra processes. The way we address things too, it's it's like, okay, well, we think sugar's the problem. Okay, well, let's make a chemical-based sugar that doesn't actually have sugar but tastes like it, and we'll put that in sodas, we'll put that in everything, and that will solve the problem. Oh, but then we find out those things are causing cancer, so probably not a good solution, but they're still available. You can still go get diet sodas, and you can still get all those unnatural sweeteners really easily, and they're accessible, yet whole foods, fresh foods, delicious natural foods are inaccessible. They are hard to get a hold of for many, many, many people. Food is not just something that we eat, but I really believe food is medicine. Food is protecting us against disease. Food is giving us energy to get through the day. Food is community building community with each other. It's learning new things. It's connecting with nature. It's all of these things. And so losing connection with that is really heartbreaking. Growing up, we used to have your standard store-bought syrup, you know, the kind that's like pretty much high fructose corn syrup, but colored with caramel food coloring to resemble maple syrup. And so we used to have that and I used to love it as a kid. I would put it all over waffles to the point where the waffles didn't even taste like waffles. They really just taste like high fructose corn syrup. And that was perfectly normal. That's what most kids do, right? And I remember every now and then my dad would bring home maple syrup. And as a kid, I thought it was gross. I thought maple syrup was weird. I thought it tasted funny. And I would always choose the other option, the high fructose corn syrup product. My dad would always say like things like, oh, you don't know what you're missing. This is the real stuff. This is the good stuff. And I kind of always just wrote those comments off because I didn't understand what that meant. I didn't know maple syrup came from a tree was completely natural and a totally different substance than what was coming from the store. I didn't understand how each of those things was impacting my body, impacting my health. This past week, Chris and I, we made our own maple syrup for the first time. And I can't believe that the same person that as a child rejected that natural product, that amazing liquid gold, is now completely in love with this maple syrup process and being connected with every step of the way. And it wasn't until I got connected with that process, with the maple syrup process, that I truly understood how wonderful it is. It's that connection that has made the difference in my life. It's the being able to grow herbs in my garden and being able to grow potatoes that I'm realizing how beneficial these things are to my health and my body. And so I truly think the connection is the answer to our broken food system. And so how are we going to change the system? Because it's broken, we know it's broken, we see it all around us. The beautiful thing about systems is that we create them. This broken food system, we created. And it doesn't stop there, we have the power, we have the ability to change it because we created it in the first place. Here are some of my suggestions for doing that. The first thing I think you can absolutely do, especially if you're already a homesteader, is just share what you've learned. Talk to people about food. Talk to people about how Brussels sprouts grow or the way plants blossom before they fruit. Talk to them about pollinators, about saving seeds, about preserving foods, and 
Share with them some really cool things that you can grow at home that maybe they didn't even think about. Talk about the impacts that food has on your body, how herbs can be used medicinally. There are so many ways food can be used that people just might not be thinking about. They might not be thinking about how food impacts their body and their health. You can also take it a step further. If you're growing food at home, if you are making things like tomato sauce, if you're canning things, if, you, if you're making your own maple syrup, maybe you have your own honeybees, or maybe you dry herbs or make spices from homegrown produce. Go ahead and share some of it. Show people what it's really like to have those things. Maybe take some fresh produce into work with you or to church with you or wherever you go and see people and encounter people who maybe haven't had exposure to this. Also, challenge yourself to believe in the power of people to change. You might think people are not going to be receptive to this, that they're not going to want to be connected with food, that they're not going to want to eat healthier or, or grow tomatoes in their backyard. Give people the benefit of the doubt and have confidence in their ability to change and grow. Just like I imagine you have changed and grown over time and just like I have, if I was still that little girl who would not eat maple syrup, I would not have the health that I have right now. And then think about communities that you're near that are experiencing the most negative consequences of the broken food system. Maybe you know of areas near you that are um, in a complete food desert with very, very little access to fresh produce. Think about community gardens that might be in cities that are near you. There are so many ways to get involved, to give back, and to help increase people's knowledge and exposure to the kind of joy, freedom, and health that you've experienced from being connected with food. I really believe that reconnecting with food has the power to change our lives and that sharing that knowledge and sharing that experience with the communities around us has the power to change the world. I thank you guys for spending the past 15 or so minutes with me. This has been really on my heart and I really felt encouraged to share. And I hope that you share this video with somebody who you think it might touch and it might influence positively. So let's work together, let's change our communities and let's change this broken system because I am not comfortable with letting it stay the way that it is. And I know you guys aren't either. I thank you for being here and I can't wait to share my next video with you. Bye friends.